And this is Ken Kreitzer for the Tri-State Engineering Expo and CBSI Talking Business. And uh, this year, the 20th Tri-State Engineering Expo for designed to uh, promote the engineering disciplines to high school students uh, will be at White Plains High School on April 14th. Several thousand uh, students and parents uh, uh, and, and, and educators uh, plan to be there. And it's going to be another terrific event. It's all sponsored by McLaren Engineering uh, and Mal McLaren, the president of the company. It's his, uh, it's uh, really his pride and joy project each year to do. And so uh, you can get more information on it at their website, which is theengineer.org. We'll have that in the, in the caption. Now, today we are very pleased to have with us uh, one of the engineering schools that is uh, going to be uh, present. We'll have a booth uh, at the event, and that uh, very glad to have Jonathan J. Hoster, who is associate associate director for undergraduate missions and recruitment in the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Syracuse University. Heard of them for a long time, uh, as I am a college basketball fan. So good to see you, uh, Jonathan. Um, Tell, tell, Jim, wait a second. what's it like for you to sign up for one of these and, and know you're going to go out and see several thousand prospective engineering students? The uh, Ken, first of all, it's so it's so great to be with you today. And uh, the Tri-State Engineering Expo is one of our favorite events of the year to be able to connect with students who are interested in learning more about engineering and for the students to have the opportunity to talk to engineers from various companies uh, and then also talk to us as as college reps about our engineering programs. It's it's just a really great match and and something we always look forward to participating in every year. Well, Jonathan, you've got a, an extraordinary engineering uh, school at uh, Syracuse. Uh, you've got uh, four major disciplines, uh, and uh, maybe we can go through those. But why don't you give us an overview of the school and uh, uh, and uh, and tell us a little bit about the programs. Sure, Ken. Yeah, I think there's never been a more exciting time to be an engineering or computer science student at Syracuse University. Um, we have we have nine ABET accredited programs in engineering and computer science, about 1,500 uh, undergraduate students in engineering and computer science, and, and so many opportunities and, and new developments happening all the time. Um, you may know a couple of years ago, the, the U.S. government passed the Chips and Science Act, which provided incentives for companies to produce semiconductors in the United States. And Micron is one of the leading manufacturers of semiconductors, and they are building a new semiconductor manufacturing facility right here in Syracuse, about 15 minutes from our campus that's scheduled to open, become operational in 2026. And they're looking at us to supply them with the talent pipeline that they need. So that's a huge opportunity that, that's happening here. Um, we also started a new program called a signature co-op that will allow students to do a semester and a summer uh, at a company in this area. So they'll get really great work experience while they're still be taking a class or two uh, to stay on track with their major and, and still graduate in a total of four years. And that'll be added to um, a range of opportunities where our students do internships and co-ops at places all over the country currently. Very good. Well, you've got uh, four terrific uh, uh, major programs and uh, maybe we can go through them because they're all so interesting to me. Uh, number one is biomedical, chemical, uh, Sounds like you, you're uh, doing a lot to support medical research. We are, Ken, absolutely. So um, biomedical and chemical engineering have uh, those two undergraduate majors. So we have students majoring in biomedical engineering, students majoring in chemical engineering, um, and they go out and do some really amazing things uh, in their career. So in biomedical engineering, it's the, it's the application of engineering to medicine or to human performance. There's tremendous research opportunities here across all the engineering disciplines and beyond because Syracuse University is a, is a research one or R1 university. And so we're at the top classification as it relates to research and tremendous opportunities for undergraduate students to be involved in that research. One of the areas that comes to mind uh, when we think about biomedical and chemical engineering is called the Bio-Inspired Institute here at Syracuse University. Um, that is a very multidisciplinary institute that involves uh, concepts and expertise from biomedical engineering, chemical engineering, physics, biology, chemistry, and really about solving problems for people and human performance and, and medicine. We also have a great relationship with SUNY, the State University of New York, uh, College of, um, I'm sorry, Upstate Medical University. Upstate Medical University is SUNY's medical school here upstate. 
uh, right across from our campus here, here in Syracuse. And we actually have some of our undergraduates in areas like biomedical engineering and get really great research experience uh, on the medical school campus while they're pursuing their bachelor's degree. Very good. I saw the medical school building, uh, F State Medical Center, right adjacent to your campus when I was up there uh, at Syracuse this fall. Hey, tell us yeah. a little bit about civil and environ environmental engineering. I assume McLaren is a civil engineering uh, company from its origins. Sure, absolutely. Um, the civil and environmental engineering are, are so important in our world. Um, they work in things like water resources, uh, structural engineering, transportation, uh, site planning, et cetera. Um, our students and all the engineering, engineering disciplines do some really interesting projects right away. So engineering projects start immediately in the first semester um, in civil engineering. That's usually a bridge project uh, for the freshman group project. Uh, usually they're told they have to design and build a bridge uh, with finite amount of materials that can hold a load of 300 pounds. Uh, and then we test those bridges with people uh, that they're not high off the ground when we test them, uh, but that's always a really exciting part of the, of the fall semester here. Uh, but again, tremendous research opportunities uh, happening in those areas as well. Um, there is a lot of research within energy here, so um, which a lot of that happens in the chemical engineering field, actually. And we have some brand new labs here in, in chemical engineering um, where we're doing things like battery research and developing alternatives to lithium ion batteries. Uh, in environmental engineering, it uh, has to do with uh, soil chemistry and water chemistry. We have a relationship with Hubbard Brook, which is an experimental forest in New Hampshire, um, where we've done collaborative research with other universities for, for decades, looking at longitudinal uh, effects of climate change on things like soil chemistry and, and water chemistry. So our students get really outstanding opportunities in the classroom, doing hands-on projects, and then also in research labs. Hey, our company, uh, CBSI, uh, down here in Harrison, New York, we've worked in the banking, uh, credit card industry for uh, over 40 years. And all of our banking clients, uh, you know, computer science, data management is so important. And that's, uh, uh, you have your electrical engineering and computer sciences uh, uh, program. Tell us about it and some of the, you, some of the uh, services and areas that you uh, end up supporting. Sure, such exciting things happening there, Ken, in, uh... Those three majors, computer science, computer engineering, and electrical engineering. Um, some of the, the research we're doing in quantum computing is happening in that department. Um, there's some really interesting things, again, in, in energy research and the application of electrical engineering to, um, to power systems, renewable energy, as well as the wireless technology. Uh, we have a, a huge company here in, that's based in Syracuse called JMA Wireless, which is actually the naming sponsor of our stadium on campus. Uh, and they are a, a big player in the development of new wireless technology, especially for stadiums and other venues. Wow. And we have students, especially from these majors who are getting those opportunities as interns, both during the summer and, and during the school year. And um, I mentioned a little bit about some of the freshman projects because all the engineering students start doing projects right away in the first semester. Uh, the other end of the spectrum is they all complete a capstone project called Senior Design um, at the end of their um, curriculum, which is either a semester long or year long project. And um, one of the really interesting ones, uh, a couple examples recently from electrical engineering and computer engineering. Um, one was a uh, an air hockey table where the the team mounted a camera over the center of the air hockey table to watch the puck. And based on the trajectory of the puck, it sent a signal to the little robotic goalie to move to stop the puck. Oh, really? uh, we also had one uh, team that that built a, um, a a robotic chess player, basically like, you know, robot against a person playing chess. And so that involved a lot of applications of computer engineering and electrical engineering to decide wh what to what move to make uh, relative to the move that the human player made. And then it actually had a robotic arm to pick up the pieces and, and move based on its decision. So there's some really exciting things happening in those areas. And another uh, major program for you is mechanical engineering, which means anything that moves and, and combined with aerospace, which anything that flies, I guess. Tell us about uh, those programs, if you would. Sure, Ken. So um, those the, the curriculum in mechanical and aerospace engineering is the same for about the first five of the eight semesters of the curriculum. So we often have students that are debating whether they want their degree in mechanical engineering or they want their degree in aerospace engineering. And if they're on either of those tracks, they can they can flip to the other one as late as the beginning of junior year and, and still stay right on track. Um, they do some really interesting things. Their senior capstones are sponsored by companies. So we have companies like GE, uh, Pratt & Whitney, 
um, and many others who are, who are cur currently sponsors of uh, mechanical engineering capstone projects. And so that's a year long project. The students have a liaison with those companies that they report to regularly in addition to the presentations that they have to do for their professor. Um, and the curriculum in mechanical and aerospace engineering prepares students for so many industries. So defense is a good example here as, as it is also for electrical engineering and computer science. Um, the energy industry is a big one, of course, automotive um, and uh, the aerospace industry is a really big one. We have um, one of our students who's a junior in aerospace just told me that he has an internship uh, this summer at, with a contractor at Johnson Space Center in Houston. Um, and I was really excited to hear that. And I immediately connected him to one of our alumni who's a flight control there at, at Mission Control. So um, we're really proud of what our students are doing while they're here on campus and, and definitely really proud of what they're doing uh, after graduation. Hey, you know, in uh, working in banking and in uh, marketing communications and digital marketing, you can't have a conversation now without talking about artificial int intelligence, machine learning, uh, all of these new processes that didn't exist when I was in graduate school. I know that. How, where do those where do you where do those kind of new technologies fit into your programs? I, I want to say, Ken, we Syracuse University has always been at the cutting edge of uh, you know what's next and preparing our students with the skills that they need to to shape the future and design the technology of the future. So. We've for a long time been in the artificial development area, especially in um, our computer science, electrical engineering, computer engineering disciplines. And so there's some really interesting research in those areas that a number of our faculty are in charge of. Um, and students can be participating in that research and 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 be on that cutting edge um, before it's, you know, uh, household news in terms of what new technology is going to be able to do. And they, get, they take courses with those professors, those same professors as well as doing research with them. Um, somewhat related to that, um, something that I think um, your audience might be interested in is, is we do an invention program uh, in the summer. Uh, it's a six week program for current undergraduates where they're they're in teams of three or four. And at the beginning of the program, they, they have to brainstorm basically, what's a problem in society and what is something tangible that they can invent to address that problem? And they have to do some patent searching and, and make sure their idea hasn't already been done. And then they design it, they prototype it, and then they pitch it to a, to a panel of judges and investors and uh, Shark Tank style. It's it's really, really impressive. And, and that program, we call it Invent at SU, has really launched our students into lots of amazing other opportunities. No, that's terrific. And uh, Jonathan, maybe you just want to uh, describe how students who are interested in one of your programs can learn more, visit the campus, and uh, and and apply to be a student. Sure, Ken, absolutely. We we love visitors. Um, we have uh, engineering info sessions and lab tours on almost every weekday in conjunction with the campus tour. Um, we also have a um, a big engineering and computer science open house, actually the same weekend as the as the Expo in White Plains, uh, that's Saturday, April 13th, where we have a big engineering and computer science open house on campus. But there's many open house days throughout the year. And like I said, in almost every weekday throughout the year, we're available for engineering and computer science info sessions and tours of our laboratories um, that work right in conjunction with the campus tour. And high school students and, and families can sign up for, for that all in one step um, on the Syracuse website. And, and certainly they can always reach out to me uh, with any questions about that process, but um, we're always really excited uh, to show to show visitors around, and we're really excited and, and proud of what our students and faculty are are doing here, and to encourage uh, the next generation to consider joining us. Absolutely, and uh, we appreciate the chance to talk with you, uh, Jonathan J. Hoster. Uh, uh, you're an O2 and also a graduate uh, degree. Uh, graduate of Syracuse. Uh, what did you study in your in your uh, in your programs? So uh, my personal background uh, is in education and communications, um, but I've been part of the engineering and computer science at admissions team for for more than ten years, and been on uh, been at Syracuse as a staff member for more than sixteen years. So um, it's really exciting to see you know, like what our graduates are doing out in the world, and we have such really fun school spirit here. We call it being a part of the Orange family. And connecting our current students with alumni uh, for networking purposes is is uh, is one of the joys about being a part of this team uh, to see where that can lead them. Uh, because alumni are always really excited to open up doors for current Syracuse students at their companies. In fact, we do immersion trips uh, in California and New York City uh, to bring our students 
uh, two companies that where they're hosted by Syracuse alumni. But those connections, of course, happen a lot um, online as well. Well, I was just talking to one of your uh, proud Syracuse grads, Larry Woodard, runs a marketing communications company, uh, Graham Stanley Advertising, right here in White Plains. And I have to say, I really enjoyed my visit to Syracuse for the Army football game last fall. And hearing your marching band do its pregame concert right out on uh, uh, outside the stadium, that was a lot of fun and very, very talented musicians and and teams uh, in, in that performance. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the great things that I always um, like to mention to high school students who are thinking about applying to Syracuse for engineering is that they'll get a really outstanding engineering education and be and we and and they have to put a lot of effort into their engineering education absolutely, but they can also be involved in other things. Uh, so we have engineering students who are in the marching band, they're in club sports. Uh, they participate in the outdoors club. They do community service. They're on dance troops or acapella groups, choirs. Um, in addition to everything they're doing in engineering, we have about 20 engineering clubs here. Uh, we have teams that design and build race cars, robots, drones, uh, rockets, bridges, medical devices, chemical powered cars, et cetera. So the students can have a really nice balance between um, their engineering education and being very serious about that and putting in the effort that they need while also uh, being engaged in other things that they like to do at the same time. Also, I see quite a few photos of your ROTC program, your Army ROTC, uh, presenting colors at uh, some of your games. And uh, you mentioned you have engineering students who are in ROTC. Absolutely, Ken. We have uh, really strong programs in both Air Force ROTC and Army. In fact, the newest building on our campus is called the National Veterans Resource Center. Uh, it's a really tremendous facility that houses our Army and Air Force ROTC programs, as well as all of our veterans education programs. And we do have a number of students in engineering who are in uh, either Army or Air Force ROTC. And logistically, it works really well uh, together. And um, I know that the, the skills that the engineering students are developing are often skills that um, are in are sought after and in, in demand uh, by the Army and the Air Force. So it's always really exciting for us to um, attend the commissioning ceremony uh, before the students graduate. and. Um, and, and celebrate their commitment uh, as uh, and their um, service as, as a new officer in the in the Army or the Air Force. Absolutely. Jonathan Hoster, uh, Associate Director for Undergraduate Missions and Recruitment, College of Engineering and Computer Science at Syracuse University. Great to have you with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you and your team at the Tri-State Engineering Expo. That'll be at White Plains High School on Sunday, April 14th. It's all sponsored by McLaren Engineering and, and some other very fine companies. Uh, there'll be several thousand students, parents. It's free tickets, but please register at their website. It is beanengineer.org. And uh, looking forward to it. This is the 20th edition of this um, expo. Uh, just uh, the pride and joy of uh, the CEO of McLaren Engineering, Al McLaren. And uh, and uh, he appreciates uh, that Syracuse University Orange will be attending the event. So Jonathan, thank you. And, Absolutely, uh, Ken. Looking forward to We'll see you on April 14th. Uh, this is Ken Kratzer for the Tri-State Engineering Expo and CBSI Talking Business. Thank you for watching.